Okay, welcome back. It is 9 1 of 2015. We're going to take a look at Lesson 5 and Lesson 6 together, um, pages 45 to 65. It seems like uh, we're ending up with uh, 20 page brackets on this volume. But uh, he has, has added some uh, geometric content to his structure of the soul. So we, want, we know that uh, theology is a geometric science for Aquinas. And so he has added, he has added some uh, geometry, some ge geometric structures. We'll take a look at that. He has added transcendence and the act of understanding. So we do have some, some excellent content in these 20 pages, and it helps refine his position. But we will begin with the soul, the sentient soul, which is the imagination where the sensations are received and then converted to psychical phantasms. And then they're going to be transferred out of the uh, imagination into the intellect, where phantasm will be uh, transformed into generalization. But in the imagination, they are formed as a lexical group of phantasms, kind of a collective whole, but not refined in any uh, intelligible way, but simply refined in a very general way of holding them as a collective of uh, phantasm entities. Now when we get into intellect, he's going to add a block on the act of understanding, but the, it is the uh, sentient soul that feeds the possible intellect. It is the uh, area where the phantasm is transformed into immaterial generalization. But then we enter the act of uh, understanding and the intellect. And uh, Aquinas tells us that uh, it is a twofold mutual concurrence consisting of abstraction by an agent intellect and then receiving the intelligibles by the possible intellect. So if we look at that agent intellect, uh, it is the illumination by divine light. In John 1 9, it illumin illuminates the deeper significant meaning of the uh, generalizations. And it moves the possible intellect to moving on, kind of a kind of an inertia for moving toward a forming signification. Now the receiving uh, intelligibles by the possible intellect, the possible intellect is actuated by that agent intellect, and uh, it becomes moved toward a uh, apprehending the intelligibles. And then we can move on to the uh, signification or the universal separate substance that will be drawn out of each one of the generalizations to raise it to signification by grasping that mark of universality that we discussed. And then by taking a mark of universality and uh, getting a hint at what the uh, fundamental universal sign will be, but before we formulate that we, that, we move on to the De Kunta threshold. But before we look at De Kunta threshold, let's take a look at that transcendence that is supplied by the uh, agent. And that's going to be block 3B that we've added. It's in, in the center top of your page. But Act 3B, the act of understanding um, as transcendence, the agent intellect provides interpretive transcendence it is the mind of God as agent artisan. It equals the highest nobility. It exists within the soul, self's soul itself as infused by God. In other words, as Holy Spirit, as an indwelling Holy Spirit. It is the active principle of illumination. And it does participate in God's superior substance as Holy Spirit. And we reference Psalm 4, 7. And Aquinas says that it illuminates through first principles and that includes uh, faith and scripture and, of course, prophecy. So it, it's an illumination through first principle, which is empowered by an infused Holy Spirit that is infused in each believer, each and every believer's intellect. So it's an infusion of Holy Spirit as the transcendence that works within our act of understanding in the possible intellect. Then we can move on to the Dekunta Threshold, so at the Dekunta threshold, now we understand that we're gathered at the Dekunta threshold in a fellowship of a community of other believers who also are indwelt by transcendent spirit, 
who also want to share their supposed truth, their supposed grasping of the uh, intelligibles as individuated entities and as overall event. And so we get it to that Takunta threshold. We share our suppositions, our supposed truth, and through dialogue we begin to move on to deeper and deeper signification. And the temporal continuum helps us understand the entire trajectory of the spirit and the entire trajectory of uh, God's truth. And then we're ready to form our positing. Now in the realm of positing, this time we actually do get uh, Aquinas using the word science. If you look on the 4B, the realm of positing, we've only added two notes, 9 and 10. We already know it's the realm where we posit the notion of the true. But in 9 he says, this is science in act. Science in act equals the true that is posited. So it is science. Theology is geometric science for Thomas Aquinas. And he gets that from Aristotle, of course. So he's doing, he's doing theology as geometric science. And uh, transcendence is rooted in an infused spirit that dwells within the soul of every believer, within the possible intellect of every believer, as an interpretive agent intellect that uh, empowers and provides the inertia for us to proceed toward pursuing the true. We are coaxed and encouraged toward pursuing the true, but we are given um, first principles. We are given intelligible first principles that are a matter of our faith and a matter of prophecy and a matter of scripture. And those first principles guide us in uh, our acquisition of the true concerning every event, every emerging event in historical reality. It speaks of its deeper truth, which would be the kingdom. That deeper truth becomes grasped by the individual, by the possible intellect, because the agent intellect is actively at work within every individual as an infused presence of spirit that participates in the supreme substance of the divine. And that infused interpretive Primarily, it's uh, infused light. It's the illumination of light. But that divine light gives us the uh, interpretive power to grasp the true, the deeper truth, and the deeper signification of every event and every individuated, individuated entity within an event so that we can uh, go to the Takunta threshold of dialogue within community and together with others engage in a dialogue that... Uh, can grasp a deeper and deeper significance for that which we are trying to analyze and uh, to apprehend a better notion of the true and a better get a better idea of how we want to individualize that notion of the true and posit it in the realm of positing as an action we want to, to move forward with as a true action out of our faith. So primarily, what he's done here, he's added... Uh, Two very fundamental areas. He let us. He has let us know now by age by page 65 that the possible intellect of the soul is a twofold act of understanding. It is a, an act of understanding that includes agent and possibility. Agent and possibility. That possibility exists as a latency within each individual, each individual's intellect. But that latency of possibility can become actualized if we will respond to the infusion of spirit, the infusion of the agent intellect, which participates in the divine substance of the eternal as the supreme nobility, if we respond to and participate in that infused agent intellect of spirit, then possibility of intellect can become actuality of intellect. We can apprehend the true Events in history can be open to us with their deeper significance, their deeper sig significance for kingdom of God, the deeper significance for the divinity and the intentionality that God intends within reality. And then we can take that to community and we can engage in dialogue. And then through dialogue, we can grasp deeper and deeper signification and we can get better and better ideas of how to individualize that positing of action. How are we going to put that into practice as an act of existence and move beyond positing. Well, first of all, move beyond understanding to positing and then move beyond positing to act of existence 
where we can seek out that uh, correspondence between intellect and true objective historical reality. But now, by page 65, now we have an idea of transcendence. Now we have an idea of agent intellect, and we have an idea of how transcendence is not an imagined entity, but transcendence is a real actuality that exists within the human soul as agent intellect, and it participates in the divine, eternal, supreme substance. So we have a, a realm that lives within us that actually is infused within us that is also co-eternal and participates in the eternal divine substance. And it's infused in the possible intellect of the soul. Remember, the, in the intellect of the soul is that which is eternal. The intellect of the soul is that which lives on. It's the intellect of the soul that is infused with spirit and that participates in the eternal substance of the divine. So it gives us a great update on the geometry. We've got uh, a couple more geometric um, sections. That'll take us through page 65.